This is the story of Ming Yong Kang, an accomplished senior manager who was demoted to being the secretary of Iseop Tai, spoiled heir to TK Group and surprise, the same guy that Ming Yong had outshined during the new employee training all those years ago. Will Iseop seek revenge for his ego by intimidating her and scaring her and kissing her? Wait, what? How did they end up like this? Let's start from the beginning, but before that, make sure to subscribe because we have a lot of good content on production. The story begins in the female lead, Ming Yong's house, as she dresses up for work. Her mother says that the dress was worth every penny, and her brother tells her that she looks so mature. But instead of admiring the dress, Ming Yong was busy calculating how many times she should wear it to make the expensive price tag worth it. Then her mom tells her that work is different from school and suggests that she follow her superior's orders without ever arguing or complaining and to always smile no matter what. Then, we are quickly taken to a scene ten years later. Ming Yong had followed her mother's advice. She always obeyed her superiors and never argued with them. She always smiles no matter the condition. As a result of her superhuman acumen, she receives lots of awards for being the best at everything. It looks like she will have a bright future, right? But no. Suddenly, she is appointed as an executive assistant. She is furious. After 10 years of working like a dog to reach the position of a senior manager, she is demoted to a mere secretary. She asks her boss if it is because she had made a mistake and offers to fix it. But her boss replies with a no. Her boss says that she is brilliant and there is nothing he can do about this very unexpected move. This is a decision made by TK Group CEO Si Wan Tai. Her boss tells her that she will receive a good offer for this position. Upon hearing that, she feels like this could be the greatest opportunity for her or the biggest crisis in her life. Then we are shown a handsome boy in the airport. He is none other than Iseop Tay, the executive director Tay who our female lead will be working for. A manager from the company picks him up saying it must have been a stressful business trip. But our male lead reveals that he lied about taking a business trip. It is just an excuse for him to enjoy a vacation after years of hard work. He had been working diligently for 34 years in hopes of being the CEO of the company. But one day, Jun Seop Tai came out of nowhere and took over the business. So he gave up working left a message and went on a fake business trip. Iseop asks the manager to take him to his apartment, but the manager replies saying he was told to take him straight to the strategy office when he lands. He pretends to be exhausted and insists that he should be sent home. Just then, he receives a call from Junseop. Iseop declines the call, but the car rings with another phone call. This time, it is from senior manager Kang Ming Yong. The manager hands the phone to Iseop, and he is confused why she would call him. His confusion clears up quickly as she informs him that she will be her personal secretary and executive assistant from now on. He is totally shocked that a talented senior manager like her is going to be his secretary. He even tries to ask Jun Seop for more detail. Before Ming Yang could pass the phone to Jun Seop, Iseop starts to scold her saying that she is not his secretary and to stop joking around. Iseop hangs up the phone without talking to Jun Seop. On the other side of the phone call, Jun Seop tells Ming Yong to proceed with the schedule anyway. Then we see our handsome main lead sleeping, but he suddenly gets a call from the manager. The manager and Ming Yong are outside waiting for him. They ask him if they can come in. He shouts at the manager, saying that he doesn't need any secretary and questions Ming Yong as to why she is outside his home. T, she tells him that she is just carrying out an order from CEO Song Baekjae. She tells him that she is coming in as they are short on time. He shouts for her to wait, but he trips and falls just as she enters the room. At first, she greets him good morning with a big smile until she realizes that he's only wearing his boxers. It was an awkward moment. Iseop's face turned red, but Ming Yong was a professional. She just calmly closed the door. Iseop screams in embarrassment. After a while, Iseop comes out properly dressed and Ming Yong tells him that they only have 15 minutes left and asks if that is enough time for him. Iseop says that he even has not showered yet, hasn't eaten, and he doesn't have anything to wear. But being the best worker in the company, Ming Yong is totally prepared. Prepared. She has brought him clothes and breakfast. He asks her if a secretary is allowed to enter his home like that, and argues that it is his private space where he does whatever he wants, like walking around naked. He asks her if she can handle it in a challenging way. She is smart, and instead questions him if he feels uncomfortable because she is a woman. He then laughs at her saying if she is being serious and questioning her back as to why he would be uncomfortable. She is not affected by his mocking, saying it's a relief that he feels comfortable around her. Before Iseop could say anything, Ming Yong reminds him that they only have 10 minutes left and tries to give Iseop a towel bath. This scared Iseop and yells at them to get the towel out of his sight. In the end, 
Iseop gives up and informs them to wait for five minutes as he showers. Iseop recalls the first time he saw Ming Yong ten years ago and remarks that she hasn't changed at all. He remembered when he had gotten second place for the first time in his life after she snatched first place as the best employee. That was when he started hating her. The flashback ends and we are brought back to the present where Iseop dries his hair. Seeing Ming Yong, he confirms with her that they have five minutes left. She praises him for doing a good job, which makes him speechless. He then informs her that he is not a fan of clingy secretaries, and he says that he doesn't like her. He is doing this to try and scare her away, but she just reminds Iseop that they are now behind schedule. Iseop was surprised by her lack of reaction. Then, from Mingyong's POV, we discover that she dislikes Iseop too. She thinks he's childish and spoiled. However, as she watches Iseop in the car, she admits to herself that in terms of looks, Iseop is totally her type and smiles awkwardly. In a flashback to one week ago, we see the CEO of TK Group, Siwan Tai, talking to Mingyong. First, he praises her for being an efficient worker, and then he tells Ming Yong to take good care of Isiop. It is obvious that the CEO cares about Isiop very much. When Ming Yong starts to doubt her abilities, the CEO mentions Ming Yong's younger brother's talents as winter sports athletes. The CEO hints that TK Group would support Ming Yong's brother's sports career if she accepts the job. In the next scene, we see Ming Yong leaving the CEO's residence while mumbling to herself about how intimidating the man was. In her mind, the CEO was like a great tiger. Just then, she receives a phone call from her younger brothers, Min Wan and Min Jun. They had good news. They are now TK Group sponsored athletes. Their entire family is celebrating this joyous occasion. Ming Yong thinks to herself that it is all worth it as long as her younger brothers are happy. We are brought back to the present where Ming Yong is sharing a car ride with Iseop. Ming Yong reminds herself that she should not have romantic thoughts about Iseop because she has to work hard for her family's happiness. The car brings them to the CEO's residence. The CEO is Iseop's grandpa, and Iseop does his duty as a grandson happily. He brings the CEO snacks and even massages the CEO's shoulders. Ming Yong thinks to herself that the CEO was very different around Iseop compared to when he had spoken with Ming Yong. But as soon as he turns to Ming Yong to ask if Ming Yong was doing her job properly, his face becomes scary again. Ming Yong hides her fears and answers that it was only her first day and she will keep on improving in the future with a big smile. Despite her smile, Isiop notices that her hands are shaking. He realizes that she is acting a different way compared to when she did at his apartment. The CEO reminds Ming Yong of his high expectations and Ming Yong reassures him that she will do her best to achieve them. Iseop concludes that Ming Yong is afraid. The CEO asks Iseop to visit his residence often, both to chat and to do business-related things. But then he calls on Ming Yong to make sure that she had understood that her job was to bring Iseop over. Ming Yong sweats nervously as she confirms that she understood it. He appointed the company's most talented employee, Ming Yong, as Iseop's secretary. Isiop agrees with his grandpa that Ming Yong is one of a kind, but he tries to oppose this arrangement. Before he could say anything, Ming Yong panics and tries to stop him by tugging on his clothes and grabbing his arm. She is worried that she will lose her job if Isiop complains in any way. In the end, he did not voice his dissatisfaction. Instead, he thanked his grandpa for assigning Ming Yong as his secretary. In the next scene, we see Ming Yong reaching home. She complains about being tired and wanting just shower and rest. Unfortunately, as she opens the door, she sees her two younger brothers. They were very happy to see her. Ming Yong's roommate, a cute girl by the name of Si Ah, welcomes her home and tells her that they had prepared a surprise party to celebrate the twins' sponsorship. Compared to how energetic the other three were behaving, Ming Yong felt like an outsider with how exhausted she was. After Ming Yong takes a shower, she finds out that Seye's older brother, Yun Song, is coming over for the party too. He had just returned to Korea after a long time overseas. Ming Yong was happy to see the cute guy again. Yun Song was happy to see Ming Yong as well. He tells her that she's still the same as ever and patted her head affectionately. For a moment, Ming Yong felt shy, but she quickly hit it by talking about her funny shirt. It has a funny drawing of an onion that was Ming Yong's favorite cartoon character. 
we learn that Ming Yong and her brothers treat Sei A and her brother like family as they grew up in the same town. Ming Yong didn't have other friends her own age as she entered the country's top college early at the age of 17. Sei and her brother, Hyun Song, were a big part of Ming Yong's youth. Hyun Song was a senior at their school and was a big help to Ming Yong during their schooling days, so much so that Ming Yong thinks of him as an older brother. The party kicks off and everyone is drinking beer except for Ming Yong because she can't hold her liquor. Aside from the twins' sponsorship, they were also celebrating because Han Song had gotten a new job at MMP Law Firm. Due to his job, he is going to settle down in Korea. Hyun Song reveals that he will be working with TK Group and asks Ming Yong which department she works in. C.A. was the one who says that Ming Yong is working as a secretary. She then pretends to interview Ming Yong about her thoughts on working with Iseop. Ming Yong's mood immediately became depressed upon hearing Iseop's name. Undeterred, Say A continues playing reporter and shares information about Iseop to the group. According to C.A., Iseop was supposed to be the successor of the TK group, but his handsome, doll-like appearance garnered everyone's attention. His privacy was frequently invaded by the media when he was young, so once he was an adult, he disappeared from the public eye entirely. C.A. is more excited about Ming Yong's job than Ming Yong herself. Ming Yong is worried about being fired, because Iseop doesn't like her. Everyone is shocked when they hear Ming Yong say that, they could not believe their ears. Ming Yong tells them the history between her and Iseop that caused them to dislike each other. However, she knows that despite their feelings, they have no choice but to work together. Hyun Song empathizes with Ming Yong's situation and shows his support for Ming Yong. While Ming Yong tries to brush off her stress by talking about the incentives she gets, Hyun Song reminds her that her health is more important than the money she earns. Convinced by Hyun Song's kind words, Ming Yong promises to not overwork herself, but the good times don't last long. Just as Ming Yong relaxes, her phone rings with new messages from Iseop asking her to prepare a bunch of documents for his meetings tomorrow. Although she hates Iseop, Ming Yong still greets him with a bright smile the next morning. Iseop does not return the favor. He just points out that Ming Yoeng was late. Turns out, Iseop was the one who caused Ming Yong to be late, as he had changed the passcode to his door, preventing her from entering his apartment. Yet, he pretends to not know about it and blames Ming Yong for disrupting their schedule. When Ming Yong tries to get Iseop to start on his workday, Iseop waves her off, saying that he's tired. Even when Ming Yong offers him a cup of coffee, he rejects her arrogantly and tells her to pour it away. As Isiop continues to be difficult, Ming Yong tries her hardest to be patient. However, she knows that she's quickly reaching her limits. Luckily, she manages to get Isiop to his office in the end. As they go through the day's briefings, they reach the segment about TK fashion. Iseop complains that it is impossible to fix TK Fashion's poor performance in a short amount of time. He is deeply upset that despite having worked hard for years, Jun Seop took all the profitable businesses and left him with scraps. This makes him unwilling to work, to the extent that he's considering quitting. Ming Yong is immediately worried as this greatly affects her work. She wonders what had happened to the younger Iseop who was passionate about his work. Iseop teases her about her obvious disappointment, but Ming Yong tries her best to be professional and says that she's happy to work for Iseop. Obviously, Iseop sees through her lies. He criticizes her for being a bad liar to her face and warns her to never do that again. Iseop just wanted to intimidate Ming Yong, but what he didn't know is that his gestures had sent Ming Yong's heart racing. In the afternoon, Iseop dreams about what happened 10 years ago during the new employee training, where Ming Yong had become the top new employee. Back then, his grandfather, the CEO of the company, had told him to keep an eye on her and find out if Ming Yong is someone who can be depended on. But Iseop was unwilling to do so. He didn't even want to think about her. As Iseop was a very handsome man with a rich family, he always had women fawning over him. Even during the training period, Isiop garnered the attention of his fellow new employees. They would get shy and run away when he smiles at them. But the fact is that Isiop did not like how much attention he got from the women. 
He thought that it was bothersome to have to pretend to be nice in order to maintain his image as the heir to the company. To him, Ming Yong was different. Ming Yong wasn't shy around him and did not avoid his gaze. Strangely, Yi Seop felt offended by Ming Yong's reaction. When Yi Seop wakes up from the dream, he is confused as to why he dreamt about the past. But before he could ponder about it, Ming Yong comes in with a lot of documents that needs Yi Seop's approval. Isiop is about to complain about the documents when he realizes that all the information is easy to read thanks to Ming Yong's data organization. Instead of feeling grateful, Isiop tells Ming Yong that she doesn't have to work so hard because no one cares if Isiop does any work for the company or not. Ming Yong denies this and reassures Isiop that he's essential to the company. She also tells him that it was an honor to be able to assist him in his work now. For a moment, Iseop seems to feel touched, but he quickly changes the topic and tells Ming Yong to leave. Later that day, when Iseop meets with his brother, Jun Siop is surprised that Iseop came to work. He praises Iseop for doing great work, but Iseop tells his brother that it was Ming Yong who did all the work. He then asked Jun Siop how he managed to get Ming Yong to work as a mere assistant for him. Isiop suspects that Jun Seop had used some sort of terrible threat to force Ming Yong to accept the company's decision. Jun Seop just laughs and mentions their publicity manager, In Mok Yu. Immediately, Isiop understands that the company has used Ming Yong's twin younger brother's skating career to threaten her. Isiop was not happy about this. But Jun Seop merely says that they only hired Ming Yong because Isiop left for a vacation and caused a lot of work to pile up. Jun Siop justifies the company's decision by saying that Ming Yong's outstanding ability at her work was needed to make up for Iseop's absence. Iseop knows that Ming Yong's family isn't rich. Her parents have a noodle restaurant, which wouldn't be able to support their son's athlete career. Ming Yong couldn't reject the company's offer if she wanted her brothers to be happy. Iseop is not happy about this, but Jun Siop doesn't care about Iseop's feelings. Instead, he asks if Iseop dislikes her because of her poor family background. Iseop doesn't answer, but in his heart, he realizes the real reason why Ming Yong works so hard. This realization makes him feel uncomfortable. After a few days, instead of hating Ming Yong, Iseop starts fearing her. She always appears out of nowhere to make him do work. Even when he thought he could have a nice cup of coffee and relax, she would come and talk about work with him. The sound of her high heels and the way she barges into his office scares him. He complains about this as he sits in his car and has manager Kim drive him around aimlessly. This is an idea that he thought up to avoid Ming Yong so he could relax. However, Ming Yong calls manager Kim in the middle of Iseop's rant, and manager Kim answers the call before Iseop manages to stop him. He quickly whispers to manager Kim to say that he's not there. Ming Yong hears him and evilly remarks that Iseop did not have any plans outside the office. This scares Iseop and he tries to lie about being busy. But Ming Yong is a professional and politely tells him that she will be waiting for him with the mountains of work. Yet Iseop is stubborn and only shows up after it was past office hours. Back at home, Ming Yong couldn't help but complain about him to Se A, ah, while Se A comforts her. Yeon Song joins them for dinner as Ming Yong's mom had sent them side dishes earlier in the day. Yeon Song mentions that Se A was going on a blind date tomorrow. Se A is surprised that he knew about it. Yeon Song explains that he knew the man that Se A was meeting, the son of a hospital director, because they went to the same elementary school. Hyun Song also mentions that the man told him that Se had replied coldly to his messages. Se awkwardly asks if the man had said anything else. Hyun Song says that the man asked about Se, and Hyun Song helpfully told him that Se likes French restaurants and that she's cute and stylish. To the side, Ming Yong looks stressed. Sensing her friend's mood, Se Ah makes Hyun Song leave quickly. It was then revealed that Ming Yong and Se Ah had a plan. Se A did not want to go on a blind date. She wanted to attend a concert of her favorite idol group, so she had begged pitifully for Ming Yong to help her.
Eventually, Mingyong agreed to go to the blind date pretending to be CA. But after hearing Hyun Song's words, Mingyong was worried that she wasn't as cute and stylish as CA. CA, however, took this as an opportunity to play dress up with Mingyong. She is very excited to give Mingyong a makeover that'll make her look even better than before. On the day of the blind date, CA is super excited about her concert. Meanwhile, Ming Yong is hesitant about her dinner, despite CA's enthusiasm about her transformation. First, CA puts the most magical and beautiful makeup on Ming Yong. It was so magical that even Ming Yong was surprised when she looked in the mirror. But Seya isn't done yet. Next, Seya dresses Ming Yong in an outfit that she has prepared. Then we see Isiop arriving at a hotel for a gathering with his friends. He walks past a woman in a blue jacket and skirt as he looks for the lounge bar. The woman is Ming Yong, but she doesn't notice Isiop either. During their dinner, Ming Yong's blind date, Jong U, compliments her looks while being flustered. Let's take a moment to appreciate Seya's amazing makeover. Wow. But all that Ming Yong could think of was that she only had to stay for an hour. Zhang Wu invites Ming Yong to the lounge bar so they can enjoy the famous cocktail while looking over the city lights. Ming Yong politely turns him down. Once the date is over, Ming Yong takes out the contact lenses she was wearing as it made her eyes feel dry. Then, Ming Yong decides to make the most of her night by enjoying the free cocktail that came with the one-night stay that Seye had gifted her. On the other side, Isiop's friends ask him about his relationship status. They laugh at him for being single. One of his friends mentions that Isiop had a prospective marriage partner who was the daughter of a professor. They then bring out the champagne to have a toast to Isiop's love life. Isiop grumbles to himself, saying that his friends are more excited than he was about his dating life. Suddenly, he hears a familiar high heel sound. His instinctive fear is quickly replaced by awe as he looks up. He could help but be dazed by the beauty of the woman before his eyes. Isayop watches her for a long time, utterly mesmerized. Based on the sound of the footsteps, Isayop thought that it was Ming Yong. But he quickly dismissed that thought because he reasons that it was impossible for Ming Yong to visit a place like this. He then texts Ming Yong to remind her about tomorrow's schedule. To his surprise, the beautiful woman's phone rang with a notification, and she took out her phone. Isayop was shocked. He even recognizes the phone grip. He had just been ranting about how lame it was to manager Kim just a few days ago. Shortly after the beautiful woman uses her phone, Isayop receives a reply. This made him even more shocked. He couldn't believe that it was Ming Yong. One of his friends notices him staring, and everyone starts teasing him about having a crush. On the other side, Ming Yong orders the cocktail that Zhang Wu mentioned earlier. It was a nice cocktail, and she enjoyed her drink in the beautiful atmosphere of the lounge. The night city view out the window, as well as her beautiful makeover, put Ming Yong in a good mood. Just then, Zhang Wu shows up. Ming Yong panics as her alcohol tolerance is only one drink. Isiop watches as Zhang Wu chats with Ming Yong and even takes a seat at her table. Zhang Wu orders three more drinks without realizing that Ming Yong is feeling stressed out. Turns out, he only ordered it because he knows that Sei Ah likes cocktails. Ming Yong decides to finish the drinks as quickly as possible before excusing herself. But in a turn of events, Hyun Song calls Jong Wu and tells him that he is coming over to pick Se Ah up and send her home. Upon hearing this, Ming Yong panics even more because the plan would be ruined if Hyun Song finds out the truth. Ming Yong tries to excuse herself, but she drank too much and her eyesight became all blurry. Jong Wu tries to help her and tells her to sit down, but Ming Yong insists on leaving. This causes Isiop to misunderstand the situation as he steps in and scolds Zhang Wu for bothering Ming Yong. Ming Yong hears the familiar voice, but due to being drunk, she can't remember who it was supposed to be. Isiop keeps scolding Zhang Yu without realizing that Ming Yong's condition is worsening. Ming Yong tries to walk away but stumbles into Isiop's chest instead. Isiop catches her to prevent her from falling, but then. Before we continue further, 
just a small request that, if you are enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and like Target is $9.99 for part three. Thanks for the support. Ming Yong's eyes, slightly glazed from intoxication, lifted to meet the familiar face before her. Iseop, looking down at Ming Yong, accidentally caught a glimpse of her partly exposed skin and quickly turned away, blushing. Removing his coat, Iseop draped it over Ming Yong. Ming Yong looked at Iseop tentatively, wondering if he had come specifically to ask for briefing materials and mentioned she would go look for them. Iseop was caught off guard by her reaction. He thought she must be crazy and all mixed up about what was going on right now. Ming Yong kept muttering about the documents and files. Iseop angrily asked Zhang how many cocktails he had made Ming Yong drink. Zhang, visibly nervous, and insisted he hadn't done anything. Taking out his business card, Zhang continued to explain that he and Ming Yong were on a date, asserting he wasn't the shameless man Isiop imagined. Zhang even turned to question Isiop's interruption of their date and asked who he was. Hearing this, Isiop clenched the business card and haughtily told Kim that he was Ming Yong's colleague. Zhang expressed doubt, but Isiop stated it definitively. Hearing their exchange, the disoriented Ming Yong tried to explain Isiop's identity. Accidentally, Isiop's coat fell to the ground. Isiop muttered he must be crazy and bent down to retrieve it, and Ming Yong instinctively also squatted down to help. Isiop, looking up, caught sight of Ming Yong's bosom again, his mouth agape in shock, his face flushing. Quickly, Isiop wrapped the coat around Ming Yong again, urging her to sober up as people were watching. Isiop was surprised to see how much she had drunk, and he also thought everyone here seemed like oddballs. Jeong, still puzzled, pressed Isiop about his identity. Before Isiop could respond, Hyunsung appeared and explained that Ming Yong was Sia's closest friend and housemate. Isiop, supporting the drunken Ming Yong, eyed the stranger curiously. After explaining to Jiong, Hyunsung then bowed to Isiop with respect. He introduced himself as the legal advisor for the TK group. Looking at the man in front of here, Ming Yong didn't recognize who he was for a moment. But once she realized her pre-drinking memories became clear again, she was shocked, fearful that Hyunsung might discover the truth. What she didn't know was that Hyunsung already knew everything. Worried and scared, Ming Yong clutched Isiop's hand tightly hiding behind him. Isiop was caught off guard, but he didn't shake off her hand either. He wondered internally if he was feeling nervous again like that time. Yon Song, smiling, told Isiop that Ming Yong must be very drunk, and he came to take her home. With his hands behind his back protecting Ming Yong, Isiop coldly informed Yun Song that he wouldn't entrust her to a stranger and questioned their relationship. Yunsong explained their close bond as childhood friends and assured Isiop there was no need for concern. As he explained, Hyunsong beckoned Ming Yong to come over. He assured her he wouldn't tell Seya about today. Then he asked Ming Yong how many drinks she'd had tonight. Still tipsy, Ming Yong fuzzily replied that she'd had three drinks, plus a little champagne. She asked if Hyunsong would scold her. Seeing her expression, Iseop was a bit incredulous, as he had never seen her expression like this before. Taking Ming Yong's hand, Hyun Song apologized to Iseop for the trouble, saying he would properly introduce himself next time. As they were leaving, Hyun Song had Ming Yong return the coat she was wearing to Iseop. But Iseop stopped her. He stepped forward and buttoned up the coat for Ming Yong himself. He told her to give the coat back tomorrow. Watching this scene, Hyun Song looked thoughtful. Supporting Ming Yong's shoulder, he thanked Isiop again. Then he whispered to Ming Yong to take her home. Isiop watched Hyun Song curiously. Just then, Ming Yong acted up in her drunken state. She said she didn't want to go home, she had come here to relax. She added she couldn't remember her hotel floor, though she was sure she'd remember once she got in the elevator. Hearing Hyun Song say he would take Ming Yong to her hotel room, Isiop was shocked his pupils enlarging. Iseop grabbed Hyun Song's wrist. Iseop said it seemed strange that he would take her to her hotel room since he wasn't her boyfriend. As her boss, Iseop said it was his duty to take her to her room. 
Supporting Mingyong, Hyunzong turned and told Lee Seop he didn't believe there was anything between him and Mingyong. The next morning, Lee Seop awoke with bleary eyes, wondering if everything that had happened last night was just a dream. After splashing some cold water on his face, Lee Seop began to wonder what happened after those two left. Once he was fully dressed, Lee Seop looked at himself in the mirror and told himself that whatever happened between the two of them was none of his business. When he arrived in the parking garage, Ming Yong greeted Iseop as usual in her normal work mode. Iseop responded, then commented that she seemed to have slept well, showing no signs of a hangover from the night before. Ming Yong turned to explain, but Iseop twisted his head away, not listening to what Ming Yong was saying. He felt irritable and puzzled, wondering why Ming Yong kept getting on his nerves. At lunchtime, Ming Yong knocked on Iseop's door to remind him that lunch was ready. Iseop turned to look at Ming Yong and told her he had no appetite and didn't want to eat. With his back to Ming Yong again, Iseop instructed her to cancel all his appointments for the day, saying he wasn't feeling well. Leaning against the door, Ming Yong lowered her head in thought. She thought it seemed hard to find the right moment to return Iseop's coat. Recalling what happened yesterday, she blushed with embarrassment, wondering whether she should pretend nothing happened or apologize to Iseop. She felt Iseop might not want to see her today. In an irritable mood, Iseop went for a drive and simply told his driver, Kim, to drive forward. Sitting in the car, Iseop leaned against the window feeling vexed. At this time, Kim said he would take Iseop to the riverside. He thought the openness there would be refreshing for Iseop. Iseop asked the driver if he looked like he was in a bad mood. Kim replied that whenever Iseop had a lot on his mind, he would go for drive. Hearing Kim's words, Iseop thought to himself that Kim was quick to catch on. Kim then mentioned it Mingyong, saying that according to her, Running around the lake is the best way to clear thoughts. Isi Op expressed curiosity upon learning Mingyong had a running habit. Kim explained that running up to 10 kilometers a day was one of Mingyong's hobbies. He couldn't help but praise her time management skills, managing to exercise despite her busy schedule. Listening to Kim, Isi Op also felt impressed inwardly, his face involuntarily turning red. Realizing he was thinking about Ming Yong again, Iseop abruptly chastised Kim for being noisy while driving. That night, Iseop sat chatting with his sister Su Jin and Jun Seop in the living room. His younger sister Su Jin teased him for coming home to eat every day despite previously claiming to be too busy. Hearing Su Jin's teasing, Iseop looked at Jun Seop and retorted that she was implying he was the only one who didn't come home. Then he asked Jun Seop why he went to see Song Baek Jae. Jun Seop replied that he was getting engaged soon, so he had to see the chairman. Hearing this news, Su Jin beside them praised Jun Seop for being so cool. Lee Seop said Su Jin was making a big deal over nothing. Unable to contain her excitement, Su Jin started mimicking the confession Jun Seop had made in the media. She added that guys as romantic as him were rare in this world. Su Jin then started teasing Iseop again, saying how pitiful he was since he only knew work and didn't date. She said Iseop must be burning inside. Iseop, with a dark expression, asked if Su Jin was asking for trouble. Laughing, she explained it was just joking. Iseop got up saying he wanted to go get some fresh air outside. He then asked Jun Siop to join him outside for a talk. Jun Siop smiled slightly at Isiop. Taking a bottle of drink, Jun Siop followed Isiop out to the yard. He spoke first, commenting on the heat, and then drinking the entire bottle in one go. Seeing Jun Siop finish the drink in one gulp, Isiop was shocked. After downing the drink, Jun Siop felt refreshed, but Isiop wondered if drinking like that would hurt his throat. Jun Siop then said, Su Jin had once told him that guys drinking like this looked sexy. Curious what Iseop wanted, Jun Seop asked. Iseop explained there was a reason he called him out. Looking into the distance, Iseop slowly said he wanted Jun Seop to take Ming Yong back to his team, but Jun Seop directly rejected it. Seeing Jun Seop reject him without even asking why, Iseop showed an incredulous expression. Jun Seop told him his team was already good and Ming Yong was doing great work. 
He then asked Eziop to give him a convincing reason. Eziop lowered his head, then reluctantly said, Ming Yong was an all-round talent, and it was a waste for her to be his secretary. But Jun Siop seemed to see through Eziop and calmly asked why he only now mentioned this. Jun Siop then asked if there were any other issues regarding Ming Yong. Eziop lowered his head silently. The next day, photos of Isiop and Ming Yong's intimate contact at a hotel bar was in the news. Su Jin, excited by the gossip, went to Isiop and teased him in person. Waking up to Su Jin's questions, Isiop was confused. Seeing the photo on her phone, he froze. Su Jin pressed Isiop on the identity of this mysterious woman. Then Su Jin started guessing the identity of the mysterious woman herself. Suddenly, she asked Isiop if the mysterious woman could be Ming Yong. Seeing Su Jin guess correctly, Isiop was shocked and flustered. Su Jin zoomed in on the photo, remarking this was the first time she'd seen Isiop embrace a woman like that. After all, even the slightest contact with an interviewer makes him panic. Su Jin even fantasized that Isiop and Ming Yong would start a wonderful office romance. Isiop tried to explain the bar scene, but Su Jin kept saying he needed to date someone. Su Jin got closer, asking if he ever thought about dating. Isiop asked her to back off. Su Jin seriously asked Isiop if he really would marry a woman he didn't love for the sake of TK Group and the Choi family's harmony. Then she wondered if that's why Isiop maintained his chastity. Isiop turned red and denied it. Then Isiop shyly said he would only date a girl he fell in love with at first sight. Hearing Isiop say this, Su Jin burst out laughing. Su Jin laughed at this and joked she would respect his thought. Isiop got mad and asked for her expense card back. Returning the expense card, she jokingly said she would always support his romance. After she left, Isiop felt shy about what he said about love. At work, Ming Yong said sorry to Isiop for the news story involving him. Isiop told Ming Yong she didn't need to apologize for this and said he also shouldn't have interfered in her personal life. But Ming Yong said she had failed in her duties as a secretary and had not promptly handled the spread of the scandal. She promised to do her utmost to protect Isiop's name. After saying this, Ming Yong deeply bowed to Isiop to show her remorse. Isiop told Ming Yong it wasn't a big deal, then immediately changed the topic by asking about his schedule. Ming Yong immediately resumed her professional demeanor. In the elevator, Isiop thought about Ming Yong's earlier humble attitude. His rationale side told him that scandal was just another job to handle for her. At this moment, Isiop strangely felt a little disappointed. The moment he stepped out of the company building, Isiop saw many reporters taking photos of him. Countless camera flashes were aimed at Isiop, and at this moment he seemed to have lost his soul and stood frozen in place. Not knowing what painful memories Isiop had recalled, his face changed and he looked like he would vomit. Seeing Isiop was not right, Ming Yong immediately went to help him with concern. Seeing Isiop breathing rapidly, turning pale and trembling, Ming Yong guessed he might be having a panic attack. At this moment, Ming Yong was very worried about Isiop, and the camera flashes in front kept going off. Ming Yong didn't know what to do. Just then, Kim arrived by car in the nick of time. Kim told Ming Yong to hurry and help Isiop into the car. In the car, Ming Yong worriedly asked Isiop if he was okay. Isiop, still in a state of panic, couldn't comprehend her words. Sweat kept dripping down Isiop's face. Ming Yong became more and more anxious, the sweat mixing with tears. Suddenly, Isiop lost consciousness and collapsed onto Ming Yong. The story then flashes back to Isiop's childhood. He was always taught, as the heir to TK Group, that countless eyes were watching him. From a young age, Isiop was brought by his parents to attend various social events. From that time on, Isiop started to become a little afraid of camera flashes. He was taught to always maintain a perfect image for TK Group, avoiding any unflattering photographs. Once, during a family photo shoot, Isiop, overwhelmed by the bright flashes, fainted. 
the memory flashes back to the present. As if recalling those unpleasant memories, Isayop suddenly woke up. Isayop propped himself up to a sitting position and saw he was in a hospital, realizing he must have lost consciousness earlier. Isayop was feeling down. He thought he was fine with camera flashes now, but this still happened. Suddenly, Isayop recalled Ming Yong's blurry voice before he passed out. Looking up, he saw Ming Yong sleeping on the sofa across from him. Isayop looked at the time and guessed Ming Yong had not gone home, but stayed here with him all night. Ming Yong moved a little in her sleep and suddenly woke up. She hurriedly got up but saw Isayop was standing right in front of her. Without her glasses, Ming Yong quickly helped Isayop, telling him to rest. After sitting down, Isayop suggested Ming Yong should go home to rest, but she refused. Ming Yong put on her glasses and said she stayed voluntarily because she wasn't not responsible for managing his case in advance. She also mentioned that Isiop hadn't been eating regularly, so she wanted to ensure he ate before leaving. When the food was served, Isiop had no appetite, but Ming Yong insisted he should eat. She reassured Isiop that news of his fainting wouldn't leak. Isiop expressed his gratitude. Suddenly, Ming Yong's stomach growled loudly. Isiop laughed, and Ming Yong was embarrassed. Isiop asked her to eat too or he wouldn't eat. As they ate, Isiop and Ming Yong chatted. He was surprised to see the usually meticulous Ming Yong with disheveled hair, looking more like a regular person. Ming Yong, upon hearing this, said she would tidy herself up. Then he confided about his past to Ming Yong. He told Ming Yong he had been taught to be perfect, careful, and to manage himself well to avoid media scandals. He felt like he was always walking on eggshells, being careful with his words and actions. He even confessed to Ming Yong that he had fainted while taking a family portrait before. Then Yi Siop frankly and laughingly told Ming Yong, it's okay to relax sometimes. Ming Yong looked at Yi Siop, stunned. After speaking, Yi Siop went back to eating and told Ming Yong not to stare blankly. While eating, Ming Yong thought that Yi Siop was facing a lot more difficulties than she realized. Later, Ming Yong, now neatly dressed, told Isiop about the video conference schedule for the day and told Isiop she would be back before 8 a.m. Isiop looked at the time, it was almost 3 a.m. now, and said 8 a.m. was too early to start work. But Ming Yong said the casting had already been postponed yesterday. Rescheduling again would not be good, and assured Isayop that all the data was fully prepared. Isayop, lounging on the bed, asked Ming Yong, Why not just sleep here? After he asked her to sleep with him, Ming Yang paused at the door and the atmosphere in the room grew awkward. Seeing that happen, Isayop regretted asking Ming Yang to stay. He quickly waved her away and told her to go home. Once he was sure that she had left, Isiop had a mental breakdown about his words. Despite that, Isiop managed to get a good night's sleep and woke up bright and early the next morning. Then, Ming Yeon arrived at his room looking as professional as usual. She got to work immediately after greeting Isio a good morning. Isiop watched her work, thinking to himself about how she must be exhausted despite working so energetically. Suddenly, Sujin showed up and asked if Isiop was going to play around for the rest of the day. Isiop demanded to know why Suyojin had showed up at his hospital room. He was shocked to hear that it was their mother who sent her to bring him medicinal herbs that he hated. Suyojin then greeted Ming Yang and told her that she knew Ming Yang from when she won first place during the company's sports competition. Sujin then pulled Isiop aside to tell him that she will help him despite Siop's protests. Before Isiop could do anything, Sujin ran back over to Ming Ying and invited her to go get coffee together. After they had gotten coffee, Sujin shared that she had seen Isiop faint many times, but she had never seen him so relaxed before. She told Ming Yang that their father had always demanded Isiop to be perfect ever since he was a child. Isiop had also always tried hard to live up to his father's expectations, but then suddenly, when Isiop was 20 years old, Junzip joined the family. Su Jin then told her that Jun Siop managed to acquire more than half of the company by mistake which made Isiop feel like he had been kicked out from the position of as the heir to Teat group. Upon hearing this, Ming Yang regrets thinking that Isiop was only a wild. 
good-for-nothing rich boy. Seeing that Ming Yang felt bad for Ai Seep, Su Jin quickly pleaded with Ming Yang to keep helping Ai Seep so he wouldn't be too stressed out with work. But before Ming Yang said anything, Su Jin pretended to cry as she told Ming Yang that she worries a lot about her brother. Ming Yang was unfortunately weak towards little girls, pleading her pitifully. So, she ended up promising Su Jin that she would come up with a plan to help Ai de-stress. In the end, the plan that Ming Yang had was a group vacation to Gangwon province. Faced with Ai skepticism, Ming Yang explained that some quality time off will help improve his work performance. Ai didn't believe her one bit and continued to sulk by ignoring Ming Yang even as she tried to talk to him. In the end, they ended up sitting quietly, each lost in their own thoughts. Ming Yang sneaked a glance at Ai si up and realized that despite his attitude, Isiop was actually quite excited for the trip. She was determined to make this vacation fun to make up for all the stress that she had put Ai si up through. Ming Yang had even recruited an amazing helper. Manager Kim, this man has a long track record of organizing recreation activities since elementary school. He was a total expert in making a vacation fun and stress-free. Due to his reputation of being an amazing vacation planner, he was appointed as the commanding knight that would lead their journey. On the way to their destination, Manager Kim enthusiastically updated Ai Siop about their accommodation. Manager Kim reassured Ai Siop that he had picked a place that was beautiful and had many good reviews. When they arrived, Manager Kim was amazed by the fact that the place looked exactly as he had seen in the pictures on the booking site. It was a large and spacious place that was furnished like a cozy home. Manager Kim took the responsibility to show everyone around, specifically pointing out that the two rooms will be taken by the ladies and the men, respectively. However, Isiop froze upon hearing this news. Both Isiop and Sujin were shocked that there were only two rooms and that they had to share the room with another person. Manager Kim didn't get why they were shocked and only ushered them to move into the rooms and unpack. Isiop did, as told but he couldn't quite get comfortable with Manager Kim in the room with him as he had never shared his room with anyone else. He was worried that he wouldn't be able to sleep knowing that there was another person in the room with him. On the other side, Ming Yang and Su Jin unpacked their luggage as well. Su Jin was surprised at how Ming Yang had brought a few things, but Ming Yang merely told her that she only packed the necessities as it was just a casual outing. Su Jin disagreed with her, saying that they must create a holiday atmosphere as they were on a vacation. After a while, Yi Siop and manager Kim waited downstairs for the two ladies as they had finished getting ready earlier. Upon hearing manager Kim calling for them, the ladies hurried up and came out of their room. Something caught Yi Siop's attention immediately. The two ladies came down the stairs wearing cute outfits and pretty makeup suited for the day out that they will be having. Ming Jing wore a pink dress that fitted her perfectly and showed off her amazing figure. Isiop couldn't help but blush when he saw Ming Ying, but he quickly turned his attention to his sister and asked her why they were all dressed up. Su Jin told him that she wanted to create a holiday atmosphere and then asked Isiop if he thinks that Ming Yang has amazing legs. Thankfully, both Ming Yang and manager Kim didn't hear what they were saying. As they got out of the house, Su Jin suggested that they split up in pairs to be more efficient with their time. Before anyone could say anything, Su Jin told Ai Siop and Ming Yang to enjoy the beautiful and interesting sights nearby while she and manager Kim shopped for groceries. Su Jin and manager Kim then quickly left before Ai Siop and Ming Yang could protest. Ai Siop and Ming Yang stared in silence as the car drove away. Then, Ming Yang said that they should indeed look around for the aforementioned sites that Su Jin had mentioned. They ended up in a forest nearby. Ming Yang asked Siop if he liked the scenery as they walked through a forest path. When he Siop said that he wasn't sure as he had never walked around in a forest before, Ming Yang shared that there was a mountain like the one they were in back at her childhood home. This forest reminded her about her childhood memories of plucking flowers, catching insects and playing in the river with her friends. Isi epitently told her that it sounded like good memories. Suddenly, Ming Yang stopped him as they came across some red berries. There was a mountain strawberry tree full of ripe berries. Ming Yang plucked one and ate it, which surprised Isi as he didn't know that the fruit is edible. Ming Yang told him that they were not only delicious but also sweet and delicious as she offered him one to try. She held it out to Isi patiently as he stared at the fruit. 
Eventually, he opened his mouth for it and allowed Ming Ying to feed it to him by hand. Li Xiup chewed slowly, not daring to look at Ming Xiong and be reminded about how close they were. Eventually, he couldn't take the taste anymore and complained that it was bitter and sour. Ming Ying unseriously apologized, saying that she must have given him one that wasn't ripe and tried to give him more berries that were actually ripe. The forest path then took them to a scenic spot by a shallow stream. They also came across a field full of pink flowers that matched the color of Ming Yang's dress. It was at that field that Ming Yang made a ring out of some wild flowers and gave it to Ai Si. Ai Si stared at the wildflower ring for a very long time with an expression that Ming Yang had never seen before. It was an expression that brought relief to Ming Yang as it was an expression of relaxation and enjoyment. They spent a long while at the field as Isiop watched Ming Ying busy herself plucking flowers. Eventually, they came to rest by a section of the stream that was under the shade of some trees. They sat side by side as Ming Ying told Isiop that he should take his own advice to always remember to relieve stress so he can enjoy life. She told him that his advice was the exact reason why she came on this trip with him. Isiop told her that he only came on the trip because he had never experienced something like this. Suddenly, it started raining. The rain quickly grew heavier, startling Iseep and Ming Yang out of the quiet moment that they were enjoying. The slope of the path had become very slippery with the rain and Iseep reminded Ming Yang to be careful as they hiked up it. Iseep grew worried as he noticed that Ming Yang's dress made it harder for her to climb the slippery slope. His hand twitched, wanting to reach out to help her. Just then, Ming Yang slipped. Iseep quickly reached out and grabbed her. Ming Yang was very surprised by the help and quickly thanked him with a smile. Isiop held Ming Ying's hand tightly even as he grumbled about the weird weather in his mind. Isiop didn't let go of her hand, even when they were no longer walking on the slippery path. He even shared his shirt to be used as a temporary umbrella. When they came across a bus stop, they quickly went in and took shelter there. They were both soaked to the bone and Isiop noticed that Ming Yang was shivering from the cold. He wrung out the water from his shirt and tried to make it as dry as possible. Then, he put it on Ming Yang to keep her warm. Ming Yang couldn't help but stare at him and at how his shirt had become see-through. She noticed that Isiop was shivering as well and asked if he was all- Isiop told her that he was fine and he was warm from all the running that they did just now. Ming Yang was still worried as Isiop's face was very red so she held her hand to his forehead to test for a fever. Isi pulled away from the touch and clenched his fist, feeling uncomfortable from Ming Yang's touch. Luckily, manager Kim and Su Jin arrived just then. Isi up and Ming Yang sat closely together in the back seat as there was a box of groceries on one end of the seat. On the ride back, Ming Yang chatted with manager Kim and Su Jin while Isi stared out the window, unwilling to look at Ming Yang. Back at the house, all four of them worked together to make dinner. Manager Kim even made a barbecue. It was a happy atmosphere and everyone enjoyed themselves, except for Iseep. Later in the night, Isiop went outside for some fresh air. He stared at the broken flower ring in his hand while lost in his thoughts. Suddenly, Ming Yingong showed up and Isiop quickly put the broken ring back into his pocket. They sat down to have a chat and Ming Yang told Isiop that all the fun that they had in the day reminded her that she's been focusing too much on her work. Isiop agreed as well, saying that his life had been always about his future at TK Group. Isiop told her that he felt as though he's been holding her back with his own issues. But Ming Yang replied that she chose her career path by herself and whatever hardships that she had to overcome was not Isiop's fault. Seeing that Isip was upset, Ming Jiang even told him that she is very honored to be able to support him as he works towards the highest position in the company. Her honest and passionate words touched Isip, and he was rendered speechless. Just then, Ming Jiang's phone rang with a phone call that broke the sweet atmosphere. Isip watched as Ming Jiang took the phone call, but he got jealous when he realized that it was He Yun Song. So, he left to give her some privacy. Isiop became an entirely different person after the vacation. He became a responsible boss who could head meetings effortlessly. His demeanor had changed from an unserious rich boy into the leader of the company who knew that he was in charge. But from Ming Yang's point of view, Isiop had become cold and impersonal. There wasn't even a trace of the carefree and relaxed Isiop that she had seen during the vacation. Ming Yang reasoned to herself that this was the real Isiop along. Isiop fully immersed himself in his job 
even working hard when he was being driven to another meeting. Lee up also paid attention as Ming Yang told him about his schedule. Yet, he couldn't stop himself from thinking about Ming Yang's relationship with Hyun Song. Their good relationship with each other bothered him. Another thing that bothered him was how hard Ming Yang was working. He decided to give her even more work just to see how much it will take before she admits that she needs a break. He also criticized her non-stop and asked her to keep redoing the same work. Yet Ming Yang just kept on working with a smile on her face. Her lack of reaction irritated Isi endlessly. When Ming Yang brought him dinner that night, Isio pretended that he didn't like it. He told Ming Yang that she'd been mistaken that it was his favorite food. Undeterred, Ming Yang just brought out another meal that was also one of Isip's favorite. Isiab was annoyed that his plan did not work, so he ate his soup unhappily despite it being delicious. Later that night, when Isiob was leaving the office, he saw that Ming Yang was eating something. Isip was shocked to find that Ming Yang was actually eating the food that he pretended to not like. Ming Yang reminded him that he was the one who said that Ming Yang had to eat the food as punishment for messing up his order. This made Isiop face pound and he asked if she did it on purpose to annoy him. Ming Yang explained that she only ate it because she was too busy to go get something else. Angrily, Isiop drank all the juice before Ming Yang could protest. Isiop then bossly said that the drink was his in the first place and told Ming Yang to keep working. He also menacingly told her that she needed to work harder. This made Ming Yang grip her fist tightly in frustration. After that, Isiop left without another word. In a hidden corner, Isiop laughed at Ming Yang's reaction. He thought that Ming Yang's angry face was amusing. Subscribe us and comment below if you guys want part 2.